You will get the most from any Systems to Win video when you launch it from its video home page. Now assuming that you didn't skip the training and video for how to prepare to use your swim lane diagram template, then we're assuming that in your working document in Excel, we're assuming that you've already followed the instructions to use the insert sheet button in your systems to win menu to insert a team charter sheet into this workbook. And then right there, in the very first row of the team charter, you're supposed to describe the tasks that start and end the process. So assuming that you didn't skip the training for these initial steps, when we get to the topic of this training video to actually start adding shapes to the flowchart, this first instruction should be real easy to follow. You're going to enter a description in the first process box and the last process box in your flowchart. So whatever your team leaders put here on your charter sheet, you're going to transcribe onto your flowchart sheet. So for example, let's say that our first task is to receive from supplier. And then let's scroll to the last task and starting with an action verb, we describe the last task thereby defining the boundaries of the scope of our flowchart. Next, let's label each swim lane. And notice that whatever titles you enter in these cells on the left get automatically duplicated in these cells on the right. Okay, now we get to the most important part of this first pass, which is to use shapes to show process flow. And to do that, we're going to insert snap to grid shapes, specifically the blue border shapes. So let's do it. Now, as you should have already learned in the new user training, there is no tab up here for formatting shapes until you select a shape. When a shape is selected, now the format tab appears. In the format tab, we select align, snap to grid and that toggles the snap to grid on. With snap to grid toggled on we select one of these blue bordered shapes and copy it. And then we select the cell that we want to copy it to. And it's important to select this biggest cell, the one that is in the middle vertically and on the left horizontally of this grouping of cells that are related to each process flow box. If we have selected that cell when we paste, then that shape is snapped to the grid, which means if we resize a column, then all of the snapped to shapes resize with the column. And if we use Control Z to undo, then all the snapped shapes resize with the column. Next, we enter text to describe the process. Then we select another blue border shape, making sure that Snap to Grid is on. Notice that I've got my Snap to Grid up here in my Quick Access Toolbar so I can access it more quickly. How did I do that? With the shape selected, I select the Format tab, Align, and this time I right click the Snap to Grid item. Rather than left clicking it, I right click and select Add to Quick Access Toolbar. And in that way, you can add any Excel menu item to your Quick Access Toolbar so that you don't have to wade through those confusing menus. With Snap to Grid toggled on, I select and copy another blue border shape, select another big cell, and paste it, and describe that process, starting with an action verb. This time, let's select a decision diamond. Copy it, select another big cell, and paste it. Describe the decision that needs to be made, and then copy and paste more blue boxes that branch off from that decision diamond. 
And this is when you might want to toggle off your Snap to Grid and then select a connector arrow to copy and paste and then grab the ends to make connections between shapes. And then wherever we drag that shape, the shapes remain connected by the arrow. And with Snap to Grid still toggled off, we might also select a text box like this one that says Yes and copy and paste that. And maybe copy this bent arrow and paste it here just to see that snapped arrows don't have to be straight. And for that matter, if you look at the Sample tab and scroll down a bit, you'll find these examples for how to use backbone connectors to weave through awkward spaces and how to use these tiny little connector diamonds to put an unlimited number of connections anywhere on any shape. And back on the training page, we teach that in addition to the blue border shapes that you're adding now to define the flow of the process, there are also green border shapes that you might optionally add usually later uh, as one of three alternate ways to sh show related documents and data. But usually you don't do that right now. Usually you stick to the blue shapes right now. And we also teach that it's usually later that you're going to add most connector arrows and text boxes and other snap off shapes. Why do you wait? Because usually you want to just lay out your blue flow because things change and you don't want to make your document too detailed yet. Now the last thing that you need to learn in this video is how to add or remove rows or columns. Now there's a different video for how to hide, copy, or move columns or rows around. But you won't be moving or copying near as frequently as you will be adding or removing rows or columns. And the good news is that there's a button to make those two things easier. So let's do it. Let's say that we want to add a new group of related columns so we can add a new step between these two steps. If we just select any random cell and then select the Systems to Win menu, Add or Remove Rows or Columns, we're going to get an error that tells us that we first have to select one of those gold cells for process time. So let's do it. When we select one of these gold cells in the work area, a little help text box will pop up telling us that's a process time cell. And now when we click that same button for add or remove rows or columns, a window shows up asking us if we want to add columns to the left or the right or add rows above or below our selected cell. We want to add columns to the left, so we just click OK. Are we sure? Yep. It did a whole bunch of fancy stuff to unprotect formulas, insert groups of related columns with all their fancy formulas and formatting. Those columns always have to stay together. Reprotect the sheet. And now, if we select another gold cell and select that same button again, and this time we select the radio button to add rows below and say yes we're sure that's what we want to do. This time it added an entire new swim lane with all those formulas and formatting for all of those interrelated rows in your new swim lane. So if we leave our sample sheet now and go back to our as is sheet you should have now completed your first pass where you've got the correct number of swim lanes, the correct number of groups of related columns. You've got blue process boxes outlining the general flow of your process. You might have a few connector arrows, but not very many. We're going to next really flesh this out by adding data 
to do analysis using Excel formulas that Visio couldn't possibly do.